the point on this episode, we are talking anxiety. That's right. The thing that you all have because it's 2020. I think 2020 started off like you're going to have a great year, January, and we're all happy. And then and then February struck. We're like, oh, this thing from China, it's coming. And we should be aware of it. And then the rest of us remember the longest March of our lives has gone on. I feel like we're still in March, even though Thanksgiving is just a short few days away. Here we are. Uh, so we have a great guest today. Sherrianna Boyle is with us. She is an international, I love her title, International Emotional Detox Coach. It would help if I push buttons to bring my guest onto the show. But of course, none of the buttons are working. So there we go. Hey, this is how we do our show. Uh, so Sherrianna, I'll use myself as an example of All right. going through and make sure I'm on the right track here. One of the big stresses we have as business owners, as parents, as a little bit of everything. I have a 13-year-old son and a 16-year-old daughter live in our house. Being the, and my wife and I are very much, you know, kind of, not kind of, we are equal in our house. But for me as a dad, there's a lot of stress involved and anxiety. Number one, I don't want my business to fail because even though I'm very confident in it, 2020 has thrown wrenches and everything and up is now down and down is now up, but making sure they're taken care of. And it's hard to take care of folks mentally when you, when you don't see it, like, because I feel one way doesn't mean they're at like my training, my military background, adapt and overcome is how I've looked at 2020 is I can still focus on my life. I'm good. Smile. Do Eric. Yeah. But my wife on the other hand can be an emotional wreck at any given one time. Obviously, mm -hmm. the, the teenagers can too. Where do I go to, <laughs> how do I keep myself in good spirits? Because sometimes I can feel, I'll be brutally honest, sometimes I feel the weight on my shoulders. And I find mm -hmm. myself even watching something as, as West Wingy, as we watch a lot of West Wing in our house, I'll start crying for no reason. Like, seriously, I'm being open here. Just start crying at something. It's like, why am I emotional about this? I've never cried at this scene before, but I'm crying. And it's, and I know it's a sign, like your body obviously does it, like, so what does all that mean? Because I know I'm not alone in this. I know there's a lot of us that are just hot messes that are trying not to be. So in my books, Emotional Detox, which I, I have a called Cleanse, and I teach people in seven steps how to process their emotions. So what I hear from you, Eric, and what that means is that there has been a management style. And when it comes to anxiety, what people have been doing is learning how to manage anxiety. And I'm gonna tell you now as an emotional detox coach, we need to stop managing anxiety. Managing means you keep it around, right? Think about it. If you manage something, that means you're figuring out how to live with something. And the reality is I want everybody to know that anxiety is curable, right? It's curable. And so when you speak about yourself and anxiety and what you're feeling, the pressures, which a lot of people are feeling pressure of taking care of everyone else. And what I would say to you as an emotional detox coach is that is how you manage your emotions. You manage them by trying to take care of everyone else. But those management systems are not working as well anymore because they're looking to be transformed. And that is the time that we're coming into in 221. Old ways of doing things are not working. And that's scaring some people and that's overwhelming. But it's a good thing. I want people to know we're going to be learning new ways now, ways that serve you, ways that serve your families, ways that serve your community. And it will include processing your emotions. Now, when you tell me that you're crying and you tell me your wife gets teary, what I'm hearing is sometimes we are just burning. We're working so hard to make the world a better place. When I'm talking to you, Eric, I feel like you, I don't, I've just met you for the first time today, but I feel like you're just working your tail off trying to make the world a better place. And I feel like your wife is with you. And that's a wonderful, wonderful thing, but it requires a lot of energy. And if you really start to burn yourself out, which so many business owners are trying so hard to hold it together, what happens when you don't process your emotions is is you it's like a hose with a bunch of holes in it. You lose energy so quick 
and now you have to burn twice as much energy energy to sustain what you have. And I can imagine that's the way business owners feel. They feel like they have to work three, four times as hard as they normally do to be able to create a living and a life for themselves and their employees. And so what I'm saying is stop regulating. It's, it's over, folks. It's over. <laughs> And it's time to learn a new way. I wrote about it in my book, Emotional Detox for Anxiety. It's all in that book. I just wrote another book that will come out down the road, but it's over. And um, we're going to learn new ways because they're not working. Yeah, because that's what you're talking about in your book is redefining anxiety, which I think a lot of us see it as a different way. I mean, what what you're saying to me, I'm like, you're dead right. I mean, I am working my tail off. I mean, I've... I can say in the last, number one, I work hard. Don't get me wrong when I make this following statement. But I work my tail off building shows, build, making sure clients are, are doing well, surviving COVID, surviving, you know, I've been married yeah. for a long time, almost uh, 17 years come next March. Uh, you know, surviving all of these things, making sure the kids are good. We have older kids too. Uh, I mean, it's a lot. And I have had, uh, I've, I, I freely admit it. People, some people do know I collapsed a few months ago. Was found uh, uh, on the floor, passed out. Basically, got up in the middle of the night, and I don't know what happened to myself. But it's a lot, and I was working myself, literally sitting in my office for eighteen to twenty hours, just making sure we were delivering because that was the one thing. Because I do believe in the competition phase of life that there's somebody out there that's going to try to eat my lunch. Now I don't believe it as much because I think we're all working hard, and I don't think it's to compete with each other; it's to survive. Uh, because we're seeing so many businesses. So when you wrote about redefining anxiety, how do you diagnose that to folks so they know that, okay, that's what I need to do. What I have is, how do you tell people what's normal and what they need to adjust? Well, the way I define anxiety and emotional detox for anxiety is an emotion or emotions looking to be processed, but can't because we won't let it. And so anxiety for me, for what I, the way I present it is, is the way you're managing. So your emotions. So it's, a, it's, a, again, it's a management system, your body. It's like this, trying to manage everything a little bit here, a little bit there. Right. And what it's really trying to tell you is that you got to take some time to really process. So a question I would have for you, Eric, is, you know, what, how do you feel? And what's it feel like to, to create all this content? You know, what's it feel like to uphold all of these standards that you've put in for yourself and expectations? And to be honest with you, just listening to you, I would say what you would cleanse in my cleanse system that I created is you would cleanse expectations because I think they're through the roof. And I think there that that you got to take them down a couple notches before you if you're collapsing, um, your body's telling you enough is enough. And you can glide right through this, Eric. You don't need to do that anymore. Yeah. Right. And nobody needs to. And I'm, I'm speaking to business owners as well. Your emotion will make things happen in a way that you're going to make. Oh, my God, that was so easy. Oh my God. Oh my God. That just, I needed somebody to help me with this. And Oh, I got this referral and this connection and Oh my gosh, it's all just happening there for me. And it's kind of a little mystical because it is because emotions are not physical. I know we want to make them physical, but we physically feel them. But remember they're connected to a very non-physical world. So they're incredibly special. Um, and once we learn to value them and stop saying, oh, I have anxiety, but instead say, wait a minute, I have some emotions that are looking to be processed right now. Let me give myself a moment to do that. And this, by the way, is a daily practice. This isn't an SOS. This is not a I wait time on the floor move. This is a daily practice of choosing and for you and for so many other people, I would say that you're going to process, um, release expectations and pressure on yourself because that pressure, and those expectations are squashing emotions of fear, of sadness, of, of just being afraid. 
And it's you're better off feeling the feelings than pushing them down. I love it. That 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 was dead on. You're right. Uh, expectations. I, I mean, I think that comes in my defense. Uh, yeah. You can blame the military. Uh, yes. We set super yes, high standards for that. ourselves, and we yes. we, we hate to fail. Uh, and yeah. it's always it's always stepping. You know, creating content. It's actually enjoyment to me. It's a mental break for me. Creativity is. Sure. It's fun, but taking a break, I have started doing that. Uh, I do have a Peloton, so I do longer rides on the Peloton, more meditation. Ever since that incident that happened months ago when I was basically, I don't know, I was working myself to death through just paranoia to keep us, everybody afloat, including helping friends out however I could, you know, looking at you know, their branding without obviously working to do it. Uh, I was just helping them because I don't like to see small business struggle. I don't like, you know, right. it's heartbreaking and you want to help everybody. It's in my nature to how many people can I help? You know, obviously right. we have the show. We want to get information out. That's why we had you on today because this is something that everyone, when you were presented as an opportunity for a guest, I loved it because this is what people need to learn about because we're so high strung between election 2020, which beat down most of us because it felt like for four years we were dealing with a campaign rally and then obviously the last few weeks has been nuts. And then COVID. COVID adds to so much stress for so many because it's it's not getting better. Uh, we keep being told we but, round the corner, but we did a full circle. So we're, we're right. doing the wrong with the corner things. I just want to bring your attention to everybody that, that the opposite of pressure is release, right? Mm -hmm. Right? So... On the other side of letting releasing that pressure, which is expectations, is going to be relief. Absolutely. That's what you're aiming for. So I want people to know it's not about it's about aiming for how how can I increase relief, right? So but that requires us to release the pressure and the expectations. And you're right, for most people, it goes back to how we were trained either, either as children or the influences like the military or whatever there's so many influences on people now it really doesn't matter what matters is we recognize it we release it and then we start to create new ways of being and that's what's happening i love it i want to thank you for joining us today sherry sherry anna boyle so the best way to get a hold of you if i say this right you can correct me if i mess it up but it's sherry yeah. is where you can correct. find it yes, got it I did it woohoo jordan see i got it right uh She's laughing in my ear, but uh, <laughs> true story. We got that right. But uh, yeah, if you need to go check out your radio show and podcast, because apparently being- I have two. Why, two, why right? not? Why not two, right? So here lecturing me about doing too much and look at you know, look at the emotional <laughs> detox coach over here. Like I got a podcast, a radio show. I'm helping people. Uh, you also have yoga that you're. I've seen on your side. I'm like, I'm, and I'm an avid, I love yoga. I got into yoga heavy. It's very- to me, it's very soothing.